Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about Go and Rust. So let's get into it. Now, this is not the first video that I've made about these two languages. And I feel like I might have to explain a little bit why I'm so fascinated by these languages. And it's not just because they're getting popular. It's because I'm I've been struggling. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, ha I have been struggling trying to figure out a good use case for them both and I feel that I've finally found my answer. At least for myself. I, I, I will not speak for everybody else because I don't know what you would use these things for. It is of course highly personal. So just bear with me. But you see, when I f was first introduced to Go and Rust as programming languages, I looked at them and for me as a just somebody who has, just as a first, at a first glance, it seemed that they did the same thing. And then I did a research and I looked into it and I realized that, hey, they're actually more, like, there's a lot of things that are similar, but they're really special. If you really get down to it, they kind of specialize in different types of things. And so I started looking to those things, the pros and the cons, and I did my research again. And I realized that, well, maybe for my personal use case, Go is the way to go. And I was leaning towards Go all this time, for a very long time. And I did so because Go had all of this nice asynchronicity with the Go routines and you had a real emphasis on network-based programming. It feels like, I said, I've said this before, Go feels, it still does. Go f making a web service or a microservice or whatever you want to call it in Go, to me, feels as, almost as natural as doing something in Express. And I absolutely love Node and Express and so forth. So to me, it felt like the given choice until recently. And let me tell you what happened. So, I see things right now. Things are moving in the ecosystem of the web and it's too early to determine where everything is going to land. But I've said this before in one or two videos, I think that I have this gut feeling that there is a change coming. It's a big one, a really big one. I think it's going to impact the way that you and I and everybody else who works with the web is going to do work for a very long time. And one of the key things here, it's still not the sort of technology that I'm un I'm not convinced just yet how much of an impact this is going to have. But for, for, if for no other reason, I think it's going to be an interesting journey for me personally. And the technology I'm speaking about is WebAssembly. Now, when I was first looking at Rust and I was trying to be objective and I was looking at it and I saw, all right, okay, so it's a system level language. It has all these benefits and so forth, but the problem with it is that it's still very early stage. C++ is around, it's been around for so, so long. It's an industry standard. Why would I possibly choose Rust over something else? And then I came to the conclusion, this was before I started looking into WebAssembly. I came to the conclusion that, well, if I were for any reason to start a completely fresh, from scratch, high performance requirement, low level type of deal sort of project, I would probably do it in Rust because it's probably going to make me more productive than doing it from scratch in C++. But I sat there and I thought, I can't really find a scenario where I think that there, because system levels programming is a complicated thing and it is something that at least to me seems to be the sort of industry where you don't really take risks in the same fashion and that's a good thing in my personal opinion so i kind of you do absolutely of course you do i'm not saying that there there's nobody doing it i mean mozilla is using rust for all kinds of things in their browser these days so they're doing they're, but they're kind of biased since it's their project their baby but it was only until i started looking into WebAssembly where i realized that this might be it and i started looking into it more and finally i realized i had an uh, i was enlightened i finally realized where rust fits into in this discussion between go and 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 rust like this 
this this like this I don't know this thing that I thought was a confrontation which is turns out it actually isn't if you really get down to it it's not because I'm pretty sure that people will probably tell me that you can do just as well in WebAssembly with Go. But this is where I think Rust will be better. Because Rust, from the limited experience I have with it, is a, to me, it's a much better development experience if you're doing non-network-based programming. If you really get down to it and you are doing graphics or you're doing that sort of thing, or you're doing really low-level systems-level programming, Rust is, in my opinion, a better experience. Go is great for network-based programming. I think it's great. But I don't really think, like, for me, Rust, uh, that, that's exactly what I was saying, uh, as I was saying earlier. If I had to start from scratch with a system-level problem, I would pick Rust because of the amazing job they've done with the compiler and addressing the sort of issues that C++ has had for so, so long. Thread safety, all of these types of things. So Rust is, in my opinion, if you are really getting down to if you really want to get really close to the hardware without all the issues that C++ brings with it, Rust is my personal favorite choice. And that makes me very excited because, as I said, for me, who is a web programmer, I couldn't really figure out a good reason as to why I should invest in Rust. Because, I, as I said, like I don't really touch that... I, I, I don't work in those, those areas. But now I can. And for a very good reason. This is the, this is the sort of thing I wish I could find with something like Elixir, for example. Because you have all these interesting, fascinating languages that bring something to the table. And you want to re... Because that's the sort of person I am. I can absolutely sit, uh, sit and have a toy project and play around with something. But what I really want is to get a chance to work live in the area where the technology that I'm using claims to be ex exceptionally well suited for solving that sort of problem right. To really try it out in the field, for real, not just in theory. I don't have that with all languages and it's one of the things I hate most about Node.js and so forth because it was the same thing I felt when I first started looking to go. I felt like, well I can do almost everything in Node. So because it's so diverse, and it's, it's, it used to be the same thing for me with Java, it's like, it's so diverse, why would I pick anything else? It kind of gets boring that you can throw it at almost, it, at almost any, any problem. But WebAssembly is not the case, at least not from my, from my experience, or rather from my perspective. So I think that that's the thing that I, dis that, that I, that I realized. I think, or rather this is, as I said, it's a personal gut feeling. I think that Rust is going to be the major player in WebAssembly. And I think that how popular Rust becomes is going to be very closely tied into to this piece of technology. How the adoption rate of WebAssembly and how well it does, I think is going to be the thing that determines how powerful Rust becomes as a language and how adopted it becomes. But if nothing else happens, at least I have found my answer. At least for me, now I know when I would use Rust and when I would use Go. If I am doing network-based programming for a high-performance service, such as a microservice or something like that, or an API or anything like that, where I really need high-performance and ideally a type system, Go is a perfect fit. If I'm doing WebAssembly, hardcore WebAssembly, Rust is going to be my go-to. And since that's more likely to happen, that's where I'm going to focus my energy. So I'm going to start doing some more Rust. Have a great day.